Jacob Wool is a right-wing pro-Trump troll who has levied false sexual assault allegations against Robert Mueller, Pete Buttigieg, and now his latest victim is Elizabeth Warren. And he's alleging that she engaged in an extramarital affair with a male escort. Now, predictably, uh, this is false. There is absolutely zero evidence to substantiate this claim. And as anyone who is familiar with Jacob Wool expected, this backfired spectacularly, and he held a press conference to essentially announce the allegations against Elizabeth Warren, and <laughs> it resulted in reporters just trolling and yelling things at him. But we'll get to all of that for some basic details on this case. We go to James Walker of Newsweek, who reports... Far-right conspiracy theorist Jacob Wool has been mocked on social media after sending out a media alert for a press conference where a former U.S. Marine will apparently claim he had an affair with 2020 presidential hopeful Elizabeth Warren. Public figures and journalists have described Wool as a curious combination of utter vileness and noted that he managed to misspell conscience in his note to the press. The Trump supporter sent out a claim in a media alert this week shared by NBC News reporter Ben Collins on Twitter Wednesday, alleging that he will appear alongside a decorated former Marine who supposedly had an affair with Democratic 2020 primary candidate Elizabeth Warren. Jack Berkman, a lobbyist who worked with Wool to perpetuate false sexual assault claims against former special counsel Robert Mueller, also put his name to the alert. The note advertising a press conference today said, Jack Berkman and Jacob Wool will be joined by a decorated former U.S. Marine and bodybuilder who alleges he was involved in a long-term sexual relationship with presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren. It went on to make claims about when the supposed affair began and how the former Marine was allegedly approached. These charges will shock the conscience of the nation, Berkman claimed in a statement. This young man's story is one that every voter needs to hear before casting a single ballot. Okay, so none of this is true. It's all entirely fabricated. Um, but before we go any further... I need to show you where this press conference was held. It was held on their front porch. And what I love is that there's just a ball pit casually in the background and you have a couple of pizzas sitting on what looks like an end table. And my favorite part is rather than just printing a fucking banner, he literally brought out an entire fucking television so he could put up a still image that says Elizabeth Warren Cougar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, like, why? <laughs> why are you wasting your time? Especially with his record. I mean, he had two sexual assault claims backfire, and now he's doing it again. And I mean, now he he's putting even, you know, seemingly less effort into this. It's embarrassing. And really, if you are someone who wanted to get this information out about Elizabeth Warren to the press, wouldn't Jacob Wool be the last person that you'd go to, given that he has zero credibility? And as uh, C.O. Bon Thompson put it on Twitter, she, I think she said it best, if I was a politician with steamy secrets, I'd simply leak them all to Jacob Wool. Problem solved. Exactly. Because when he says something, you automatically just know that he's probably making it up. He's probably just straight up lying. He fabricated it and he found some one to essentially lie on his behalf, presumably because that individual was paid off. This is what he does. He's a troll. And I think that maybe he views himself as a serious person, but nobody takes him seriously. And what's astonishing to me is just how fast these allegations fell apart. Because NBC News reporter Brandy Zadrowski tweeted, The patsy in Jacob Wool's latest sex smear says he got a scar from a sexcapade with Elizabeth Warren. His Instagram shows something else. And as you can see from his Instagram post here, he explains how he actually got the scar. <laughs> Hit my back with a chain trying to take down a swing. So no, he did not get that from uh, being a little bit too kinky with Elizabeth Warren. He did it to himself. Now, one of the allegations was that um, Elizabeth Warren was like whipping him and he was whipping her or something like that. So um, it's funny that after that post was made, Jacob Wool contacted that reporter and was like, no, 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 that's not the actual scar. There's a different scar on his back that uh, was done to him by Elizabeth Warren during a sex session. 
I mean, this is so embarrassing. Who believes this? I don't think that there's anyone who believes this, including people on the right. You'd have to be an idiot to believe anything that he's saying. And my favorite part, like the cherry on top of the shit Sunday here is the triple X tattoo. I think that that is just so gnarly and hilarious. And it's perfectly fitting <laughs> in this situation. Um, now, of course, I can't end the segment without showing you some clips from this press conference, uh, courtesy of Jordan Uhl and Ford Fisher, because it's it's so entertaining. No, no, half of Americans don't participate in BDSM. We do. Actually, actually, yeah. fetish. Yeah. Is this about the briefcase? Half, yes. half, is this, listen, <laughs> half, half of Americans. Maybe, maybe you participate in BDSM, but half of Americans don't. When it comes to honoring service here, we don't play around. And if you're gonna keep impugning this serviceman's service, fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan, then you're gonna leave. Get that guy out of here. He's crazy. What? There's no stolen valor here. Go ahead and go ahead and remove him, Lewis. Get that guy out of there. He's freaking me out. Get that guy out of there. Oh my god, this is just, this is amazing. My favorite part is how he kept trying to get the security guard to remove reporters, but he wouldn't. <laughs> oh my god, what a fail. What a miserable failure this was. Now, one moment that I also want to highlight is somebody asked, look, as a Trump supporter, why is it okay for Donald Trump to engage in an extramarital uh, affair, but if Elizabeth Warren does it, that's somehow bad and immoral? Why does Trump get a pass when Elizabeth Warren, by your own standards, shouldn't? Well, his response was just unintentionally hilarious, and I don't, I don't even know uh, what to say about this. Well, I'll tell you what the difference is. I'll tell you what the difference is. The difference is very clear. Trump is a peak alpha male. And so And so when you look at when you look at President Trump, him engaging in an extramarital affair, if that's even true, I don't think it is. I don't think it is would be understandable, would be normal, would be average. But when you look at Elizabeth Warren, you're talking about a very frail, very old woman who's going to be who's going to be hormonally challenged as it relates to the uh, All right, we're going to do two more questions. Mr. Summer, you haven't you haven't had a chance, Mr. Summer. There you have it. It's okay for Donald Trump because he is a peak alpha male. <laughs> Because Donald Trump is exactly what I think of when, you know, um, somebody describes masculinity. This blubbering buffoon who's always sweaty, who uses an entire bottle of Jurgen's Afterglow lotion on his face every single morning to make his skin glow in a really weird orange, almost like radioactive way. I mean, this is just, it's comical. So we'll end this segment by sharing a little bit of lighthearted trolling on Elizabeth Warren's behalf over this allegation. And uh, this is her responding to the accusation that maybe she's a cougar. It's always a good day to be reminded that I got where I am because a great education was available for $50 a semester at the University of Houston. Go Cougars. We need to cancel student debt and make college free for everyone who wants it. Yeah. So there you have it. I don't think she's too worried about this. And I don't think that anyone who has accusations uh, lobbed against them by Jacob Wool has to be too worried because nobody takes him seriously. Nobody should take him seriously. He's a joke. And I don't think he realizes how we view him as a joke. Collectively, as American citizens, we view him as a joke. Even if you're on the right, there's no way that you can actually take this individual seriously. He's a troll. And, um, you know, he keeps playing a really dangerous game where you are lobbing these false accusations that people eventually it's going to catch up to you. Eventually, somebody's going to sue you for doing this. Um, but, you know, he deserves it because he keeps doing this. He is literally slandering people's character in order to defend Donald Trump. And um, it's hurting his reputation. And long term, this is not going to be good for him because, I mean... It's just, it's bad. It's a bad move. You don't want to be known as the individual who was 
lobbing false accusations at people left and right all to defend Donald Trump. I mean, that's not a good look. Like, I support Bernie Sanders. I would never lob a false accusation against one of Bernie Sanders' opponents. I think that that's immoral. And I would rather lose with integrity than win by doing it in a dirty way. But when you're a Republican and you have no morals and you defend Donald Trump and you're a sycophant, then this is what you have to resort to. Anyone who is an opponent of Donald Trump, who he perceives to be a threat to Donald Trump, has to be smeared. Well, um... He's going to keep doing this, and it's going to backfire every single time, and I'm going to make fun of him every single time, because this really is unintentionally hilarious. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.